So I'm not rushing, spaced out swag, best believe I'm paper touching, super stupid flow, and you bitches can't tell them nothing, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand, UFO, uniquely flying, outstanding, all I speak is cash, I see why you don't understand me, got a sense for drama, so I always keep the cannon, this is the invasion, so watch out for our landing, standing, Tall, never too far Spring and summer fashion, bro, I get it in the fall Y'all about to start hating and I don't mind at all I'm a thriller like MJ and my flow is off the wall Who they, who they, they're not from around here It's gotta be my imagination I think it's in them face 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 They not from around here I think it's in them face It's gotta be my imagination Who they, who they, they're not from around here it's gotta be my imagination. I think it's in their face. I think it's in their face. I think it's in their face. Man, they not from around here. I think it's in their face. Greetings, earthlings. I am Wallo. I am Wallo. I am Wallo. I live life like there's no tomorrow. Chris King K G N O O B. What homes you ain't? And we live, baby. How y'all doing? Welcome to the Who That Podcast, the Life is Podcast, this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River. We are on the mothership again for another episode. Thank you for tuning in. Um, got another action-packed, information-packed uh, hour for you. As always, I'm B. How you doing? You made it through another week. Congratulations. Hope you're doing good. We got the captain, uh, Demario, over here. What's up, what's up? And our guest <laughs> for this week, um, he has been on before. Uh, many people in the town know him. Very influential, uh, very wise man. Um, literally taught me, but also has taught me a whole lot outside of school. But uh, very, very, very uh, pleased to have on the show again with us, Mr. Garland Brown. How you doing, Mr. Brown? Glad to be here. Man, thank you for uh, hopping on with us. I'm, j- I'm G'd up with y'all with my mask on. <laughs> yeah. Masked up today. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Brown has been keeping everybody up to date with uh, the COVID numbers here locally. Um, it, a lot of people don't don't pay attention to the local numbers. Uh, we get caught up in the, in the national prerogative of things. And Mr. Brown has made sure that we stay up to date with what's going on at the home base. So we've had him come on to the show. We got a lot of things to talk about. But first and foremost, that's that was a very important reason why uh, he's been so gracious to come back onto the show because he has a lot of information that a lot of us overlook or don't take as seriously. So we needed somebody with uh, some keen knowledge, you know what I mean, so we can be able to and speak about some of the things that we're going to be covering. So first off, you have a good week? I did. It was good. It was good. Everything was... Uh Productive, I guess you could say. All you know? right, hey, productive so, the best you can do. Especially yeah. with, if you if you can be productive with this whole Corona stuff going on, you winning. Yeah, I had uh, I had some people tell me it was twenty uh, twenty's year of the hustler. Like you got to hustle to skip by in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Like you can't just punch a clock. No, no, nah, nah, you gotta you gotta use your imagination. Everybody knows those essential jobs ain't paying shit. Man, that's crazy too. Yeah. How you call it essential and you ain't paying? Bro? Right. That's crazy. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you had a good week. No, it would be like that sometimes. <laughs> he yeah. said no. no I'm not winning at all. Oh. So, <laughs> I'm just trying to survive and trying to make it to uh, to tomorrow. And yeah. a lot of teachers uh, are feeling like this as well. Mm. Uh, and we'll get into that later. But um, as far as, you know, I'm also dealing with uh, – <laughs> storm damage from two three months ago that i'm still trying to deal with and get settled and man you know it's just uh some some life Never you, know, you got a full dose of it 
But other than that, uh, health wise, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm kind of worried about some friends, man. And in another way, I'm feeling some type of way because this weekend was the Pillow Family reunion, which is my family. Mm-hmm. And we've had reunions for the last 30 years, 32 mm. years. This is supposed to be the, the uh, 16th reunion. Oh, wow. Oh. And because of COVID, we had to cancel it. The elders and the family decided to say, hey, it's too dangerous for us to have it. We will cancel. And we are, haven't been able to have it this year. And this was the weekend for it. Uh, and that's yeah. something that I want to do. And I have a, a great deal of pleasure in working with the rest of the people in my family with. Nah, man. So See, this uh, this, yeah. this corona is throwing off a lot of stuff. Coronavirus is no joke. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people think it is. No. A lot of people think it is, and they and they feel like it's a uh, a ploy mm-hmm. to to push other things. And I'm not in full disagreement with them on whatever the uh, they think it may lead to in other fields, but. The severity of the virus itself mm-hmm. can't be downplayed, you know? Yeah, I don't disagree uh, fully with right. a lot of things that the concern, because anytime you have a, a disaster, mm-hmm. you got people to try to profit off of it. Of it's course. new things that they're trying to do. Opportunities. Yes. And that's something that for the people to have to be guarded with. Also, this is a political season. Yes. So we're in the midst of elections. We're in the midst of in a lot of turmoil in the United States mm-hmm. based upon the George Floyd situation. Yes. Um, you got people, you, the economic factors. Yes. Okay, this economics affect everyone. Y- yes. Don't make any difference what color you are, what side of town you live on. We all dealing with that. Mm-hmm. So to sh- shut everything down and then... Okay, what are we going to do? Right. You know, you got people lost jobs. It's people's incomes have been affected. Tremendous. Right now, this past week, people lost extra income that was coming in to help them through this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very interesting time, and it's also a very dangerous time to be living in. And that's the reason why everybody really needs to take a deep breath and – try to work on this stuff together because we have folk in this country and outside of this country who are getting ready to try to exploit that. Mm-hmm. And already uh, and they are exploiting. It. Yeah, already working okay. towards it. So my teachings is to work with people and try to come up with solutions. Right. The number one thing we want to do is try to come up with solutions. But we can't do that if we're yelling at each other. And I got a mask on in in the house, burning up. But the reason why I'm doing this because if I got something, I don't want y'all to catch me. Right. Correct. You know, I'm not trying to make a statement or anything. I don't. I don't want to wear a mask. Right. It's just it's, it's the precautions that it's, we, we got to take in and, this time. Right. And a lot of people don't know that. And, and I've tried to explain this before the coronavirus shut everything down. I went through and was taking my class. We were watching this. Mm-hmm. One of my classes, I have a standard in which we have to look at national security. Okay. Okay. This is a threat to national security. Definitely. Okay. And I went through quarantine. It's eight, seven or eight diseases that will quarantine a country under U.S. code. Mm. And coronavirus is one of them. Ebola is one of them. Yeah. The influenza is one of them. Yeah. Smallpox is one of them. Uh, tuberculosis is one of them. And one of the things in looking in through my family history, which I found interesting was, was the year 1914 was very interesting because my grandmother's grandfather and my grandmother's aunt had two aunts to die in 1914 from tuberculosis. Hmm. Come to Murray County, this was in Franklin County. Come to Murray County on my daddy's side. This was on my mother's side. Right. On my daddy's side, my great grandfather, my grandfather's father, died in 1914 when my granddaddy was three years old from tuberculosis. He lost a sister. And the Brown family lost basically part of the family tree right there because of that. Wow. So it's not uncommon 
in history for these things happen. It hadn't happened in modern times. Right. You're getting ready to see it. This right here could be the coldest winter ever. And I, I wanted to, we're going to get to that because we got the fall coming up, which mm-hmm. is the, the flu, the cold season. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But before we get to that, because you mentioned uh, the fact that it is an election year, mm-hmm. um, I did want to speak on the bizarre and interesting uh, political rally that Kanye West had. That, mm-hmm. Did you get a chance to take a yes. look at it? Yes. What about you, Pac? You, you saw it. Some of it. Yeah. The, the, audio, of just, the audio sucked. Man, the mm-hmm. fact that somebody that got their fame and their fortune, their notoriety and their influence from rapping into a microphone mm-hmm. had their first political rally with no microphone. Right. Told me everything I need to know. I was <laughs> like, this is, going, this is all going mm-hmm. down bad right now. Uh, what did you think about some of his comments? I mean, the the what he said about Harriet Tubman. And, and all well, that, well like, what did he say for the listeners that didn't? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, he said that Harriet Tubman really didn't free slaves. Uh, she just took them to work for other white people. Oh. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that we can, you know, say to break that down. But I, I believe our, most of our listeners are smart. So right, right, right. Y'all, y'all know the, the falsehood and the, the different layers of, of BS that that was. But... In a political season where you have Donald Trump running for re-election, you have Joe Biden, who is a former vice president running, and then you have Kanye West running now. What did you What did you make of that whole? Uh, I don't know. It's a fiasco. It's a debacle to me. Well, I'm, I'm really <laughs> worried about the guy. Um, yeah. Kanye, bless his heart, has some problems. Yeah. I, and yeah. he's saying things that if you blurted them out in that type of context, you're going to get in trouble mm-hmm. saying that. We know Harriet Tubman freed free slaves. Right. I mean, that's documented. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of the greatest people of all time in the United States was mm-hmm. Harriet Tubman. Of all time. Okay? One of the bravest people there ever were. Yes. But you, he said that, yeah, he freed... He should have said what type of slavery she free him from. You know, I mean, right. you have to explain yourself when you say something like that. Yeah, and that's the and thing he, he doesn't he doesn't clarify. He doesn't do that, and it's it's bad. Somebody, you know, if somebody really loved him, they would keep him away from something like that. And, yes, and you know, it's nothing to play with because he is he's got people that he can influence. Mm-hmm. In a major I mean, way. rap is no joke. No, I mean, it, if you don't understand the power of rap, in 1988, Columbia was country. We had local cliques. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fall of 1988, straight out of Compton came out. That winter of 1989, summer of 1989, everybody was a crip. <laughs> he said everybody was. Yeah. I mean, seriously, right? That's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, and then if you uh, put it into um, into the uh, you know contextualize it with that meeting that was had, and and it's one of those things where people you know can go look it up. But there was uh, uh, an executive that wrote a letter to saying that he went to a meeting mm-hmm. at the uh, the beginning of the nineties, um, eighty eight, eighty nine, mm-hmm. saying that they were going to use rap to spread that culture of, of violence, gang banging, that type of thing. To fund privatized prisons. Exactly. And and then if you follow the trajectory of what happened after that, that's exactly what happened. Well, you so, know where the headquarters of CCA is, don't you? No, I don't. Brentwood. Really? Yeah. The headquarters of HCA, HCA Hospital Corporation of America, is in Nashville. Brentwood. Oh, wow. in Brentwood. So, for people, what is the CCA? CCA was Correction Corporation of America. Yeah. If anyone knows about Wayne County mm-hmm. and the prison at Clifton, that is a private prison. It was, it was the first CCA prison in Tennessee. Mm. Okay? Tennessee, at one time, was not all the way right wing like it is now. Tennessee right. was a moderate state. Right. Tennessee wouldn't allow for those private prisons to be built. And then it switched up. Okay. Tennessee really doesn't have a lot of private prisons in them now. I think it's only four. Okay. Oh, oh, private prisons. Private prisons. 
Okay, you got the, it's a women's facility, I believe, down in, in West Tennessee. It's the uh, Juvenile Detention Center in Nashville across the street from the Titan Stadium. Mm -hmm. The one at Clifton, I think they got one in East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But in Texas, California, Arizona, they went out there and they built more prisons and schools. Yeah, uh, especially in California. In California, that was a big thing during, uh, when Schwarzenegger was governor. Uh, they, that was one of the main criticisms that they had of them. Right, but see, I'm going back farther than that. These people, I, I'm going to tell you how close they are. I taught a man who, a, chi, a student, taught a guy whose daddy was a VP for CCA. No. Oh. He was never a prison guard. He was a, he was a, he was a businessman. Yeah. So it's no uh, coincidence. Right. And I don't believe in coincidence. I, and I don't, I'm, I'm like the godfather. I don't believe in coincidence. But mm -hmm. it's no coincidence that CCA, gangster rap, and crack cocaine hit Tennessee at the same time. Uh, it's documented that CCA and the DEA uh, join alliances in, in, in certain respects to do certain things. That's that's right. documented that and the see, DEA teamed up with the private <laughs> privatized uh, yeah. prison industry. And let me also tell you this right here. I, I want to throw this out there because a lot of people, you know, they, they jump on this Joe Biden stuff and it, I got a lot of folks, you, know, you, 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 you backing him, he wrote the crime bill and everybody who uh, beats Bernie wrote the crime bill. Bill Clinton wrote, true enough, all of this stuff was going on during the Clinton administration, mm -hmm. okay? But, Folk don't understand that the lobbyists behind the crime bill and the people who pay for it right. was CCA and mm. Wacken Hut. I think Wacken Hut is securities now, security. Mm. They, they Wacken Hut and CCA were the two biggest private prison owners in America. Right. And they okay. were behind the, the lobbying. They were the lobbying. So, yeah, Bill Clinton can come up in and put whatever bill he wants to up there. All right. If they ain't lobbying, then he wouldn't it have ain't going to get passed. Man, you're talking about what? The first, what? Was the, it the 1994 first, crime bill? Well, no, no, no. But I'm saying it's kind of like the first uh, month of Trump in presidency. He signed, he got his, his to do's out the way. He signed right. bills for people. Now, they said he wasn't even reading that stuff. Yeah, he just signing the bills off. Yep. And you know what he was doing? Those were executive orders. Yeah. Yes. Okay, which is different because Trump ran on a platform that Obama signed the most. You got to listen to Trump. Trump going to tell you what he's going to do. No, definitely. And like, he's saying. He's been doing that and, the entire and, time. No, nah, what he does yeah. is he throws Obama out there. Well, Obama did such and such, and he did this, and it was the worst thing ever was. When he got in office, he did everything that Obama, and Obama didn't do. He got in there and did it. If mm -hmm. Obama would have signed that many executive orders, if I was president, the first executive order, and I was black, the first executive order, I said, we're going to give reparations for slavery. Boom. See, that bypasses Congress and all the rest of All food. of that. Fast. Obama never did he did sign the executive order that gave the president the ability to have unlimited executive orders, though. He did sign that, but that you got to understand that Congress at that time, I had, I try to reach out across the aisle. I'm, I'm not a Republican, but I got friends that are Republicans. Yes. Right. I've got a lot of people who are, I'm, they call me left wing. I don't believe that. I'm more moderate. Mm -hmm. But I got friends up on it both extreme ends, like y'all. Right, right. I had a guy that sent me an email when I got back from D.C. after the inauguration. This cat said... Which inauguration are you speaking I'm of? talking about the first Obama inauguration. Okay, all right. He told me, he said, man, he said, I'm reaching out to you because he said there's some stuff going on. They had a meeting, that, and I say they, I'm talking about the Republican elected leadership. Okay. Had a meeting, and they said, "Do not pass any of his laws." I remember uh, that's called Mitch McConnell right. came out and said that he was going to uh, make that's, sure he was a one-term president. Make sure his job was to make him a one-term president. Yep. That's called nullification. Yes. So your whole government has been nullified. 
A lot of people not understanding what's going on. We got a toxic thing going on in Washington, D.C. Correct. That's not coming from true Republicans. These is coming from what they call libertarians. Mm -hmm. They have taken the party. Mm -hmm. That's the equivalent of pure socialists taking over the Democratic Party, which they haven't. Mm. Okay? You got to understand cold speaking politics, and you got to be well versed in it. Yeah, and what's what I've seen happen, especially in this last election, uh, in a 2016 election, is that you've had a lot of folk claiming to be Bernie Sanders supporters. Yes, that have turned a, a whole left or the whole uh, progressive wing of the Democratic Party against the Democrat established Democratic Party. Right, destroyed from the inside. So what that's called. It's political subterfuge. Yes. These people are not real. And I've got friends of mine that you know, come up with that. Hold on. Bernie, Bernie Sanders has been a senator for years. Where has he been? Right. He just showed up in the last couple of years. Well, Hillary Clinton, well, I don't know. Hillary Clinton was actually the brains behind Bill Clinton. Why wouldn't you want her to be president? Oh, I did not like I, a lot I, of people don't like her, but you gotta understand you gotta understand you gotta understand something about this right about politics. Look what you got now. Yeah, but I, I really Hold feel on, like, hold on, I want you to think about this. Look at what you got now. You got somebody that's getting ready to establish a dictatorship here. I, I but I honestly feel like versus a lawyer who's gonna follow rule of law. But I don't think she would. Yes, she would. I don't, I don't she wouldn't know. be doing what this joke was doing. I don't know. Because they wouldn't have let her. I don't know. She just, that's a very, that, that woman got, the. she got so much tied to her. She got a whole lot tied to her. And let me tell you what she got, the biggest thing she got tied around her neck. And I'm going to tell you what all this hate is about. What? Watergate. Watergate. I, I don't think that's where all the hate come from. Oh, yeah. You got to understand, Watergate, the people who are the old heads now, Mm-hmm. Were the young dogs doing Watergate, and they took all of their power. It took them almost twenty years to get their power back. Mm. See, they made deals with the devil to get their power back, and they doing some things now because the whole country is so far. To, it's been pushed to the right in the in the Roosevelt policies mm-hmm. that made. The Democratic Party, what it is, mm-hmm. is gone. That's dangerous. Do you know what Roosevelt policies were? Um, the Reconstruction type stuff. The, no, uh, no. You sitting here, you got these lights in this room. We got electricity. Right. TVA brings electricity to you. Yeah. Do you know after the Civil War, the North, after, after the uh, Compromise of 1878, the North said to the South, y'all can have it. We ain't, that's the reason why Jim Crow was allowed to do what he did. They were like, we ain't going to pay no attention to y'all. We finna go back up here and leave you alone. Dirt farmers. Mm. So the South did not progress like the North did. They had electric. When you go up north and you see like Boston, Detroit, right, New York City, Philadelphia, Eastern Seaboard, and you see all of these things going, yeah, they weren't going up north until Roosevelt, because he had a Tennessean, Cordell Hull, mm-hmm. as his Secretary of State, came down here, TVA. Well, we gonna put the people down in the south to work building the dams, electricity, and stuff on. Well, see, when you did that, they created a public electrical company okay. versus a private one. Yes. That's at least $300 know. off your light bill. Because as high as my light bill is, and as much as I complain about that light bill, <laughs> because it's not private, now you go over to North Carolina and deal with Duke Electric. It's, it's okay? crazy. Actually, that's wild. You just said that state. I was just doing a photo shoot for a lady that uh, came from North Carolina, mm-hmm. and she was talking about how, because uh, it's hot, mm-hmm. she was like, 
Um, man, uh, I know by the time August hit, my, my electricity bill going to be through the roof. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, it always goes up because, you know, AC, she like, no, nah, it's different. Mm -hmm. She was like, uh, she had moved from here to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. She was like, no, nah, it's different. It's a whole different type of bill. And I, I didn't pry into it or anything like that. Uh, I was doing a photo shoot. Yeah, but I mean. That's what she was speaking That's what on. she's talking about. You got a, mm. you got private, they trying to privatize everything. Yeah. When they say defund the police. Yeah. So, oh, that's a good idea. No, 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 no. The police need to be funded. We need to find every resource we can and put that into policing. So we make sure we get people who are good police officers. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting somebody that's not going to be a good. You, when you can't pay somebody what they're worth, you're going to get the, you're going to start picking the, the scraping of the, the barrel. Do you think that's already happening? Or do you, do you Columbia's think police department is not. Columbia's police department now is funded better than it was, and the city council here mm -hmm. made sure that they went through to try to fund it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we lose people to Franklin, to Nashville, to Brentwood. Matter of fact, the best police department to work in, if you can get in, is Brentwood. That's the highest paying police department in this area. Well, that, that's mm -hmm. where the money is. That's where the money yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. And I think, and I would say, like your your generation, when they were bringing our generation up, I know I was told that, you know, police officers, firefighters, social mm -hmm. workers, those right. were not good jobs. Exactly. So then I, if I'm being told that, I, I imagine a large portion, percentage of people are being told that. So... My theory is a lot of people who would have made great police officers, great firemen, and not saying, you know, everyone we got now is bad, but I feel like those people did other things mm -hmm. because they were raised just like me saying, okay, those jobs don't pay enough for you to risk your life. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with teachers. Right, right. Same thing with teachers. The, the, uh, the guys that I know on the police department, and we – privately have very, very good conversations. Right. Okay, they're not going to come out and say this in public. Right. But <laughs> yeah, sorry y'all. We we have uh, push the button. <laughs> we have real good conversations with with uh, each other and when I talk to these guys, they have been around long enough to start seeing the fruit of their labor. Yeah. Right. But if you can't get somebody in that's paying their family. Okay, it's just like teaching. I know folk that left teaching 20 years ago right. that's making double what I'm making now. Mm. Okay? Mm. Um, to give you a good example between the federal government and the state and local government, mm -hmm. in 2003, I went on an interview with a federal government agency here in Columbia. And when we finished the interview yeah. they were on the verge of hiring me and they said uh let's talk about salary i said okay at that time in 2003 i had seven years experience teaching okay. eight, eight years experience teaching mm -hmm. and uh they said well you'll go in as a g whatever i said excuse me uh they said we will count your time in as with the state government and to the federal government. We'll roll your time over and that's where you'll start. Okay. First year, I would have made uh, $2,000 less then than I was have. teaching. Wow. I would have took a pay cut. The second year, I would have made in 12 months what I was making in 10 months, so it's still been a pay cut. Mm -hmm. The third year, when I got off apprentice level, I would have been making about what I'm making now as a teacher. Oh, wow. That, was, that would have been in 2006. So by 2020, if you were to Yeah, I would have probably been making over $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, the state of Tennessee, as far as teachers are concerned, a lot of folk don't understand that our salaries, uh, once you hit 20 years, <coughs> you don't get paid no more money. Yeah, who? Yeah, you top out. You top out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last five years, I've been making the same amount of money. Then, add on top of that, the last 10 years, the state has actually given us raises. But, they'll give you a raise 
and then they put a, a, a caveat to it, it says, well, you have to uh, be a level five teacher. Well, I get my evaluation, I'm a five teacher mm-hmm. by the Murray County Center. But then they add the school scores because I don't have a test. I have to take the whole school scores. On top of... So I go from a level five, if Central was a level three, I'm going to be a level oh. three teacher. So I can't get that money. Regardless of your own individual teaching. One uh, year, one uh, year they attached our raise. It was going to be like $500 to attendance. Of the students? No, of us. Oh, okay. Our attendance. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So it was like you could only miss two days a year. Wow. Still qualify for it. I missed two days a year. Okay, in the summer, I'm waiting for that money. <laughs> Nothing. Nobody, I know two teachers in the system got it because they attached it to your test scores. So, it was so if you was a five scores. and you got that attendance level, you would get $500. I was a five, but then they put the test scores in it. See, that's the reason why they're trying to rush us back to school. And on top of it, Governor Lee saying, well, we're going to have these standardized tests and we're still going to be doing this testing because it's a way to slick teachers out of their money. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk Shots about it. Shots fired. So, what do you, all right, first off, I just want to ask, do you think it's a good idea for kids to be going back to school during this pandemic? Uh, yeah, let's this go pandemic? ahead and jump into the topic. Of the the pers- personally speaking, let me, let me say this right off the top, okay? Yes. I have been involved in sitting in the, the – planning sessions for us to return to school. Okay. The leadership in Murray County is trying to do to the best of their ability everything they can do to make sure that these kids go back to school safe. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of folk hot right now. It's a lot of people upset. Because yeah, is it is it safe at all? Like, Well, let's, let's put it like this right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and I heard a, a friend of mine put it like this on Facebook, and she said, okay. she said, mm-hmm. was it safe enough for your child to go to the park and play baseball? Well, yeah, they out there playing baseball now. Mm-hmm. Was it safe enough for your child when y'all went to Florida two weeks ago? When y'all went to Florida? So as far as kids come back to school, if you've been doing all this stuff, if you haven't been social distancing, you haven't been wearing your mask, if you hadn't been doing everything you need to do, then it shouldn't be a concern for you to send your kids back to school. Now, here's the, here's the other side of this. Okay. Had to take a real deep breath now because I'm going to go off. Okay. All right. We open back up too soon as a country as the country as a state now this is where your leadership falls apart from the president Mm -hmm. i'm going to leave it up to the governors governors i'm going to leave it up to the county mayors then you put that pressure on the county mayor who's following the president well, what else? it's political now. So mm-hmm. if that's his boy, he following him. He going to do what the president say. Yeah, we yeah. need to do this now. And in, in, make, in, in, let's in, not make any mistakes. Our county mayor. Oh, yeah, he's is, 100%. But I'm following not, the president. I'm, right. going, yeah. I'm, going to get, I'm giving him the benefit here in saying, okay, he's, he's saying, okay, I'm going to put my mask on, but I'm, I'm also going to give individual freedom and stuff, which we all know is BS anyway. Because right. there's no such thing as individual freedom in a quarantine. We mm. under quarantine. Yes. The governor has a state of emergency to August the 29th. And we're still in a national emergency on top of that. And we're still under a national emergency under that. Mm-hmm. Why are you sending us back to school? Exactly. That's my that's my whole thing. That's okay. the, That's my whole thing of just looking at it logically. Right. If there's a multiple states of emergency quarantines and lockdowns going on it is not the 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 situation where you send people back to school right it, but that's, that's my only thing it just doesn't make sense here's the here's the but here okay we the district has done some stuff where 
if you don't want to do that, it's going to be made possible for you to be able to still educate your child. Mm -hmm. We've got a virtual academy set up. We got remote learning going to be set up. Mm -hmm. We have taken the in-service days that were going to be placed throughout the year and put them at the front of the year so y'all, the kids won't have to come back on the third. They're going to come back on the tenth. Mm -hmm. So we got five extra days to plan. Okay? So I've got some gut feeling in there that it's in with 880 cases. Yeah. Uh, Murray County is we up to 880. I think it may be close to 400 new cases now. Yeah, it's up 40% since last week. 40% since last week. Since we at the level we are right now, right. I'm. it's probably about a 37th chance that we may not start on time if that continues. What, do you think it, that is, is there any indication that it would slow down? It's no indication that it would slow down, and I'm not going to use a, my man's name. He, uh, he put this on Facebook, and one of the math teachers that I respect, and one of the great math teachers in Murray County, mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee, did a uh, statistical analysis of this. Okay. And he said that we'll have 5,000 cases by Labor Day. In Murray County? Yeah. He said we have sixteen thousand by October, if it continues. And now we talking that's that's forty percent of the of the city. We only got the population yeah. of forty thousand. Yeah. yeah, I know right now. Personally, no, in Columbia, thirty people with me. Man, yeah, I just uh, this week alone, three. No, take that all the way back. Five people mm -hmm. that I know came down with it in this past week. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's it's week. community spread now. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think the guy's name. He he's been doing some YouTube stuff. Uh, he's a doctor. I think his name is Martinson. He drew a lot of controversy at the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. There are some people who have been on the money with everything that's happened in the coronavirus on YouTube. Now you can't right. look at YouTube and find everybody on there. This is where your discerning abilities and your That's wisdom right. comes in. Yeah, be able to read through the grapevine. Right. Yeah. You got to. This guy came on. His name is Chris Martinson, I believe is his name. He's he's a doctor. He's a pathologist. Mm -hmm. And he said, way back in the beginning, of what everything was going to happen. For the United States, they predicted that, and this was back in the beginning, in March, that we would not come out of the first phase until August the 21st. Mm. Okay? Right. We had it flattened. It wasn't down here. No. However, you let's open it back up. Trips. You want everybody to go in downtown Nashville <coughs> and drink yeah, at right. bars. You want people, you can, we cannot do the stuff that we should be doing, like starting back up to school right. right. Because we didn't do what we need, we need to do. Back then, right. like when we had the chance to keep it flat. Right. So now right. we're getting ready to go into flu season. Mm -hmm. Right. And exactly. All right. So before we, we jump into that, uh, because that's, that's right on the cusp. Right. Um, as far as when it comes to school and COVID, what about those parents that, that don't have the broadband connection and See, so they, their yeah. kids have they have to go that type of thing um do you with the rate that is what is climbing do you see a higher uh percentage of kids being being you know positive with covid from uh from sending them back to school though even i if don't it's think safe, it, i it's, think it's they possible, already it? have it i think a lot of them already have it going to school and and that's see that's another failure and with the climate of everything right now, I don't know how people would have actually done it. Right. And I've got good friends of mine on the left right. that disagrees with this. Okay. My thing was everybody should have been tested. Now, it's a it's some issues with that mm -hmm. because you can get tested today and catch it tomorrow. Right. right? Okay. And it's, that's legitimate stuff. Right. right. That was my first thought. But everybody, we should have been testing people to see who's who has and who doesn't. And we never did do that. We never got to that phase in which we could say who actually has this. Now, that being said, logistically speaking, it would have crushed the medical system and the testing centers. It's the testing centers are getting crushed right now. 
Right. Have you seen the headlines about the uh, the false positives that come from the testing? And uh, it's been false. Do- from my understanding of that, and reading up on it, mm-hmm. this goes into some big pharma stuff mm-hmm. because you had multiple tests created. Right. Some of those tests are throwing back false positives. Some mm-hmm. of them throwing back false negatives. Mm-hmm. I know four people that got false negatives back in the spring. I know somebody that got a false positive. And I know somebody that got some false positives recently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's the thing there. And we don't really know what the margin of error is and that because this stuff is new. We don't, we just don't know what's going on. Right. So that's the unknown. But teachers are teachers are worried. It's all kinds of teachers I'll be, worried. I'll about be this extremely stuff. worried because you got a lot of teachers that are now. I've worked through the pandemic. I've done essential work during that time period, so I'm gotten used to washing my hands 350 times a day and putting mm-hmm. on hand sanitizer, etc. Et right. But the thing that's that's scary to people is that you've had people teachers who have been social distance quarantined. Now we're going into this situation in which people have been out mm-hmm. and we don't know what we're going to get. And then we got sick parents that we're taking care of. Yeah. We've got sick spouses that yes. we're taking care of. And Some th- people have children, sick children. There's a lot uh, of children raised by their grandparents. A lot of children raised by their grandparents. And these grand and we all know the elderly are most acceptable. So there are some. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, put names, but a friend of mine who has uh, a child, mm-hmm. her her grandmother watches. So mm-hmm. her daughter's great grandmother, mm-hmm. but the grandmother came down with it, mm-hmm. well, with, mm-hmm. at least with the symptoms, mm-hmm. and her only way of, you know, of daycare or having somebody watch her kid. It was through the grandmother, so right. now it's like, all right, y'all both just got to wear masks and right. just keep her in the room. But in a few weeks, she's going to be going on to the second or third grade, whatever mm-hmm. grade she's mm-hmm. going to, but it's second, third, or something like that. But you've been around this elderly person right. who, who has had the symptoms, and then now you got to go back because she doesn't have the broadband internet well, see, set up or, la- or a laptop to do that. That right there. Let me, let me tell you about the, the broadband situation. Got a friend of mine that we were talking about, Kelly Oak. Mm-hmm. I think the broadband or the the internet stops at the store in Color. If you go east of there, you don't have anything. Yeah. Where my parents live, two forty five Council Pike area. Mm-hmm. Their house is where the internet stops. Wow. Cable stops right there. So if you go west of there, where my brother lives, you ain't got nothing. There's nothing down there. Okay? So we've got some spots. Hampshire. Yeah. Ain't you know. Nothing. nothing. You know, it's, the it's, it's some logistical things, man, that, you know, nobody. And because, see, this is where we are as a country and going back to Roosevelt and mm-hmm. with TVA. Okay. See, if this would have been that time period and the Americans had the. I'm going to help you, my brother. Mentality. Mentality. Yeah. Right. Spirit of utilitarianism. We would have had coverage in those places. But because it's for profit now, we don't. Right. Uh, the, uh, that goes to the uh, the, privacy, the private market that we was talking about. Santa Fe. Santa Fe is in the same situation. And, you know, we have, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. We we talk about Columbia and the needs of Columbia, but you got areas. If you go up to Theta to fly, I know they they don't have that. Uh, Hampshire, mm-hmm. Cullioca, you know, um, Rally Hill. So we're gonna have a lot of kids that. Be, uh because they don't have that, that have to go back to school. Right they they gonna have to, and they don't. And another thing, you got kids that don't. That if their parents go back to work, right, they gonna have to have somebody watch them. And see, that's another reason why they're trying to push that. It goes back to another political thing, but parents that's out of work right now, if they go back to work, mm-hmm. they gonna have to have somebody watching those kids. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's a hell of a time to start a daycare. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is deep. 
So, so going into the fall coming up, mm -hmm. uh, with, with the fall, we have the kids that'll be back in school. We have a, a pandemic with a virus that we're not used to. We have the cold and flu season, and we have an election season, all coming uh, in a. Mm -hmm. what, what, what it, if it gets real deal cold around, I always notice I'm freezing on uh, when I'm trick or treating mm -hmm. with with, the, with my niece and nephew. So right around mid October is when it's gonna get real cold when people a, a really start getting the the so the, the other sicknesses when people start getting the other sicknesses. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. So what do you think uh, the future looks like with with all those different variables going on? It's not gonna look good. It's not. It definitely don't look. I'm good. going to. I'm gonna tell you a lot of folks that we that I know and we've sat around and then we're lay people. We're not medical professionals. All right. right. Well, we sat around and talked, and then I called my people who are medical professionals. And we was like, when did this actually start? A lot of them say, hey, this thing started probably last fall. Mm. Okay? When we came back from fall break, mm -hmm. 2019, mm -hmm. we had an abnormal month of sickness in October. Going all the way November. up to all the way up Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. We actually and talked about it. the uh, the nurse at school told me she said well, it's an abnormal, uh, it's an abnormal respiratory infection. I mean, uh, uh, unknown is what she right. said. Right. And I was like, okay, unknown respiratory infection. That's scary. Right. Because right. usually we know what causes. Yeah. What's not causing? So people were sick with this. Right. And folks were not understanding what was going on at the time luckily you know you didn't see too many abnormal deaths during that time period that i know of. exactly it took the words right out of my mind but you know if you go listen to what they were saying in new york city and in certain cities london mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of abnormal death in the month of february mm. Uh, mm. i haven't caught up with the the statistical information but that's something that they say you want to look at to see actually who how many people actually died from it is look at the abnormal deaths that took place okay the so when you place. got that going on i'm gonna look that up um it was it's it's an actual statistic that they keep up with at the cdc of abnormal deaths it's it's like uh, it might not be abnormal it might be extra deaths what do you think because there's so many deaths that occur a month statistically yeah and then they are looking so it's so many extra above that is what they're looking at. Oh, something happened here. What right. was it? What do you think about the uh, the government pulling funding for CDC and the WHO organization? That's political and, and it's dangerous because, because you, you've got a situation. I keep telling people this. The president is not the king. We have a system uh, of government Checks that is and three bodies. Yes. President is the executive branch. Right. He enforces the law. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court interprets the law. Mm -hmm. And the Congress makes, makes the, the law. law. Yes. They all work in concert with each other. They can all check each other. Right. If it's working like it's supposed to. But it's not. It's not working like it's supposed to be working. So you've got a situation in which he jumps up, well, we're going to take funding away from you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, why? They should have told him, said, hey, Congress, uh, somebody's going to have to sue what's going to happen right. to stop it. Had nobody done it yet. No, but they I, I jumped, don't think it's going to happen. They jumped up and did a 360. Because I got the information from opening school back up from May. And they released something last week that's totally different. Mm, they switched it up. Yeah, they they took out some things, and you know that's what worries me, because now I can't trust the people who are supposed to be the experts. Right, right, and that's that's where I think a lot of people are very nervous and scared mm -hmm. and uh, and concerned because there is no definitive answer. There's no definitive person to go to right. to get the answer. You know what I mean, right? Like, but that it, was that was the big plan push out enough information that's false so the truth blends in mm -hmm. you know mass confusion now nobody has anywhere to turn yes. you really just have to pick an agenda and ride with it pretty much you know what i'm saying 
So with the flu season coming up and uh, with the COVID and uh, the fact that this all started last fall, so we can only imagine that it's going to boost. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about vaccinations? Personally speaking, I would be hesitant to take a vaccination. And then yeah. you, you, you've got to understand this about the vaccination. AIDS happened in 1980, mm-hmm. 79-80. They just came up with a vaccine for that last year. Two years ago. So you, you, what we need is a therapeutic. If you catch it right now, Mayor Mulder call it. Yeah. He's been coming on, documenting what happened to him. Hey, if you catch it, ain't nothing you can get. You better take some time out. Yeah. Build your immune system. I call, my best friend is, my best friend is a doctor. He's a pathologist. Okay. okay. Sent him a text about two weeks ago. What can I take for this? Okay, what can I take for it? Yes. Now, he said, just try to ride it out, drink it, try to get your immune system built yeah, up. That's my African, take fluids. African American people, Hispanic people, people of color, mm-hmm. vitamin D. Yes. Okay. My friend, I, that's what I was about to say, my friend uh, that, that, that got it, I took him fenugreek, black seed oil, uh, vitamin D, and some mm-hmm. orange juice. Mm-hmm. And I was like, just go through put yourself on a regimen of this because i know these will build your immune system to mm-hmm. where it'll fight what's already in you and then it'll also fight to keep things from coming in mm-hmm. and i'm like mm-hmm. i don't know exactly how to you know ain't nobody mm-hmm. don't nobody know how to treat it right but i know what to build your immune system right, right. And right. that's and that's the only thing we know that'll fight right. so i i went and you know uh, sat on his porch just like his little care package type thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, just start taking these mm-hmm. and make that orange juice your best friend. And, you know, make sure you stay hydrated with water. I'm like, that's pretty much the most I can, you know, figure out because uh, he knows I'm into the holistic mm-hmm. and, and everything. He's Hot like, tea. Yeah, that type of stuff. But it's, it's very, very, very curious uh, when we don't have a definitive treatment for it and we're going into a cold season. And this talk, these talks that they're doing about vaccines mm-hmm. and vaccinations, and uh, well, that's and that talk that they're doing is basically they're throwing out something to sue people because folk. I see uh, in the comments one of my coworkers she's saying that everybody's fighting against each other. Everybody's fighting. This all this. I'm gonna tell you something. I saw something yesterday that scared me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in uh, Kentucky in Louisville. You got these brothers that's done G'd up, and they got their AKs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you got 3% out there with AKs. We talked Look about here. this on the show a few weeks ago at the very end, and I said that I don't, I don't agree with that strategy of showing your hand. Right. I don't either. That's my only thing. Yeah. I believe, I, I've been saying this for years, and I used to get flack on Facebook for saying it, but I believe every black person in the country needs a gun. But that's my belief. But I don't think you supposed to. You are supposed to show your hand, right? Because you don't know what the KKK doing. You don't. You don't know what those other neo Nazis are doing. They don't show their hand like that. But like, they've been showing their hand. But the thing about saying, it come is, come out in mass AKs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now they can Google your whatever right, your little right, gun club right, is. Figure right, out the members list. Right. And, you know what I mean? It's just I just don't agree with right. that being the your first tactic. You, you know? I don't. I don't have a problem with. It, but my problem with that is, is that. It's like you're saying, you don't show what your hand is. Mm-hmm. And my issue is, and I and I go back to what I said before. If times were good, nobody would be fighting. Mm, but it's the most volatile situation. But we've, it's the most volatile year we've had since 1968. Yep. Okay? Yep. Which that's before my lifetime. But So when you start listening to... Uh, if if you got neo Nazis over here and the neo Nazi got some money in his pocket and he working, he ain't got that much time of, of thinking about trying to mess with somebody. Right. But when they don't, and it's the same thing as with this cat over here in the hood. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sitting around thinking evil instead of thinking good. Oh, I'm doing good. I'm my stomach full. You know, I can sit down. I don't have to worry about nothing. And that's now, a conversation we don't have either. Being right. when you on lockdown and you cooped up in the house, I don't mind as a devil's, devil's playground. The neo, there is a lot of psychological issues exactly. that people are dealing with. They dealing with it. That if, whether it be I'm from, dealing with, it. so I know right. they dealing with it. Right. exactly anybody that's ever lived. 
I'm going to say this. I'm probably going to catch flat. But any time that I personally have ever lived in, let's say, um, an apartment complex that's majority Section 8. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got a Mm -hmm. lot of people sitting around. Mm -hmm. It's been more drama there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just because, not because of the people, just because everybody's just sitting around, Mm -hmm. watching each other, Mm -hmm. watching each other's kids, fighting their kids. That's the reason why they're trying to get us to go back to school. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm just going to be real. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get something to break that. Right. And mm. we, the teachers and the, and the school officials is in the middle of this now. They dropped us sw- swipe. And here, y'all take care. We're going to sit this over here for y'all. Because now we're going to have, and a lot of teachers will tell you, that's something my whole career I've seen us do is basically try to come up with solving society's problems. Right. Yes. Okay. So now we in the middle of the, breaking that monotony that. because right. these people in the, so, they yeah. sitting here looking at each other and they getting mad. Yep. Okay, and that's a recipe for disaster. Right it there. is. It, it is. is. Yes. So what? But the thing about it, what you don't know is that same energy gonna come up in the school. That's what I was about. To, all right. Okay. <laughs> yes. So with that being said, that's what I was about to get into with that those psychological issues and with uh, uh, children. You know on all types of drugs and, and opioids and stuff like mm-hmm. that, like to get them through school or whatever. But that's that energy coming in and then the corona stuff going on, it just seems like it's destined to be a volatile situation that is going to spread it amongst mm-hmm. youth. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And first off, teachers need to get paid more for even dealing with this. But secondly, how do... Is there... In the, in the talks or meetings that you've had... Is there a de-escalation, uh, new like platform, new way of a plan? Uh, uh, yeah, to to <laughs> deal. Well, I mean, like specifically for that. You know what I mean? See, have those they, have they of, thought that out? Those type of things is lost in trying to figure out how we are going to deliver instruction. Because see, that's the number one thing as a teacher is that you're trying to deliver instruction. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've got subject that I've got to make sure that this child gets. And on top of that, this year, they missed two months. Right. Yep. I was about to ask, is this the most difficult school year you've you, Oh, yeah, you this, is the only, this is the only time that I've gone back to school in 25 years that I didn't want to go back. Mm. Mm. Okay? I'm ready to go back, but I'm dreading it because now <sighs> – I got to get the the kids have got to get caught back up. Yeah, because yeah. they've been off for four months. Four months. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they still got standardized testing coming through. They got standardized tests that they want us to accomplish. They still want us to do these things, and then these kids have missed two months of instruction. The last two months too. Okay, because <laughs> I gave assignments and and I only had five people doing. Them. Mm. Okay, and then but I think kids were told well it's not going to be graded, but see if we do it this time it's going to be graded. All right. Okay, but it's 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 some unique stuff, and I, I I really try politically. You know, even though I don't want to do it, I still try to give benefit of the doubt to the to the powers to be. Right. Okay. About okay, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to to maintain domestic tranquility, even though we don't have it right now. All right. right. So we're trying to create it and get that back on track. But. Is this is this all uh, that that tranquility that that you say that that is they're trying to foster? Right. Um, do you believe that the ways that they're going about trying to create it is 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 the right path to get to that? No. And see, this goes back to the, to the president himself and and his people. Yes. Uh, when you got folks who are have a certain political philosophy, if I was president. Okay, right. I'm 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 not the smartest tool in the shed. I might have had the best charisma. Mm. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be like John Kennedy. John Kennedy went out and got the baddest people that he could get, as far as in their fields, yeah. and put them in certain positions. Right. This president went out and got folks who wanted to take over those positions and put them in power. Right. right. Regardless if they qualified or not. Regardless of their qualification. He was whatever. looking for yes men. Well, he was looking for yes people. And, yes. and the president yes, do man. that. But yeah. he's a businessman, right. and that's what businessmen do. Yes. Right. Okay? But 
as far as this time period and what we're doing right now, that's not gonna be it. That's not gonna work. It's just not. And it's it's gonna be it's it's really it's really a shame to me because it's too many smart people in the United States to be wasted away in this time period. I heard of I heard a teacher teacher went off the other morning. I don't know what type of facility she was working in, but she went completely off. What, what, what made and this because, because somebody in that facility that she was in was tested positive for coronavirus. Mm. Mm-hmm. They evacuated the building. Mm-hmm. And she said, if you would have gave this thing to teachers about three months ago, we would have solved it already. Damn. We could have had a plan. You're right. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you wanted to start school, what you should have done after Fourth of July, shut everything down again. Let that virus get through everybody that mm-hmm. then went out to the beach and caught it down in Florida mm-hmm. and whatever they doing. Gatlinburg and, and wherever they, they got going, it from. Yeah. Let it calm down and then let's go back out and tr- see what we can do then. Yeah. Because we know we already know this. They haven't really said it's going to be a period of time come up where we may have to shut down for two weeks or three weeks. Uh, oh, definitely. I, I definitely see And that that's the reason why when we go back to school, mm-hmm. the key words that you're going to hear when we go back to school is going to be remote learning. Yes. So get used to that term because remote you got three learning. options. You can send your child to school in person. You can do remote learning for nine weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. And then you can go to the virtual academy. Virtual Academy will be all year. You can't, you won't be able to go back to school. But the remote, after nine weeks, you have the option of going back. If mm-hmm. you want to. If you want to. Or you can continue with, with the remote learning. They told us, hey, when you go back to school, we're going to be preparing packets for mm-hmm. remote learning. Because they know at some point in time, we might have an ice storm. Mm-hmm. Here go your work for the next two weeks. It ain't mm-hmm. gonna be no normal school. We out of school for snow again. Right. It's, just, it's a shutdown. It's a whole right. Real deal. And we and you got your work. Wow. To work on during that time period. Wow. This so is that that whole concept that's yeah. gonna be a change. Yeah, that's this different. And you know the thing, I hate. I shouldn't say this, but I'll say it. I hate the last twenty years. Mm-hmm. In education, it's been the words you've heard is, is school reform. We got to reform the school, the, the schools of this and schools of that. Right. We got to reform it. What you reform? A man told me one time, two plus two is always going to be four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said H two O is always going to be water. Yeah. He said nouns, pronouns, and verbs and adjectives are all going to be those things. All right. You don't have to reform that. So what do you think they mean by that coded language of Oh, that's privatizing school. schools. Oh, so. See, this what this is what oh, you're so. getting ready to see is the the full privatization because you got a Betsy DeVos privatization queen. She wants schools to be charter schools, private schools. Yeah, all of them. All of them. As many as she can get. Well, see, that's part of that libertarian thing. That's what I'm telling you about the Koch brothers. I mean, people need to look up who the Koch oh, brothers oh, are. Oh, the Koch brothers are crazy. Like they they are some of the biggest political donors. Uh, uh, I, th- I think what the last twenty years, maybe longer, a longer. And yeah. if you look at the nineteen eighty platform, David Koch, who I think has passed on, was the vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. Their platform was defund the police, mm. defund the fire department, defund Social Security, defund City Hall, and let everything mm. be private and so, business run everything. So with the with and you got some. Hold on for a minute. Mm-hmm. You got some people. That believe that like religion. That's what I was about to get into, uh, because you have uh, BLM, you know, who is who is pushing the defund the police department, but then seeing but who, where these ideas come from. Who is BLM? Exactly, but you see where these ideas come from and where they stem from in the 1980s, and like you said, they believe like religion. Then you see who the funders and the backers are for BLM, the, exactly. the George Soros and 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 the, and the Koch brothers type of thing. But see, Koch brothers and George, a, it's George, a Trojan horse. Yeah, George Soros and the Koch brothers, two different situations. Okay, George Soros, 
I, I don't know Soros. I've heard of him. I've, I've done a uh, little research on yeah, him. Yeah, man, that dude wicked, man. I ain't saying he ain't. But we know what the Koch brothers did. And yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell you this right here. The Koch brothers' daddy <laughs> was one of the founding fathers of the John Burst Society. Mm. Now, see, they don't talk about them. But John Burt's the John Burt Society, there is documented research. And it gets to a point in which it's one connection that you can't make to put them at both the Kennedy and the King assassination. What's the all right, all right, break it down, Bert. Okay. Fred Coke was a was a John Burt Society. All right, if you it's too long for me to even get into however. In the assassination of JFK. Mm-hmm. About two or three months before Kennedy gets killed, Oswald supposedly shoots at a General Walker in Dallas. Mm -hmm. They didn't catch him for doing it, okay? But the bullet that was found in his house in the wall was from this gun that they found on 6-4 Texas School Book Depository. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get into it, Oswald had a friend named DeMornshield. George DeMornshield. When the House Select Committee on Assassinations was at his door to serve the subpoena on him, knocking on the door, he killed himself. Mm. This dude right here knew presidents. He knew Jackie Kennedy. He knew a whole bunch of famous people. And he knew Oswald. He also knew Walker. Well, when you go digging in Walker, Walker was affiliated with MacArthur. Mm -hmm. These jokers was very racist. Yeah. And then you get into some I people. MacArthur. Yeah, go, MacArthur. You get into some people called Wesley Swift, who was a preacher. He was a he was a reverend, and it goes back to that Church of the Jesus Christ Creator, which is that violent group of white supremacists that have been doing stuff ever since then. Mm. And see, that's where a lot of uh, Ray had some linkage to them because in California. Ray was in L.A. three weeks before he killed Martin Luther King. Nobody knows why Ray went to California, went to L.A. And Ray is the, uh, the man the guy who say, killed Martin Luther King, yes, supposedly. Supposedly. Yes. And see when you get so it, all of them that trickles down and then that bring that that's the background history of the people that are backing the political game well, you here got today. The, the, the way that it was told to me was the John Burt Society, they were so right wing that they said Eisenhower was a communist. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That's how deep they were. Everybody was yeah. communist to them. And they were affiliated with some of these right wing neo-Nazi type groups. Mm -hmm. the, the Minutemen. Mm -hmm. The Patriots. And see, when you go back in your history and you start looking up all these old organizations, Oswald had connections to him. Uh, Ray on the periphery had connections to him. Mm -hmm. Ray was dealing drugs. He was he was a drug drug runner out of Canada, going down to New Orleans, doing going out to L.A. These people funded their operations through drug money. Uh, See, I got a book at, at school like that Iran Contra group. Like the Iran Contra, all of it goes back to the same people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a book. It's written by a guy. The book is that thick. It's called General Walker and the Murder of President Kennedy. I read that twice on a spring break. Dang. <laughs> That's how deep this was. And highlighted. It's highlighted. Because there is a guy by the name of Miltier, Joseph Miltier. Joseph Miltier had information to both the King and the Kennedy assassination. He basically get they got him on tape two weeks before President Kennedy gets killed, and he's telling his friend, who was a police informant, who had mm -hmm. who had the microphones and stuff up under the table they were sitting at. And the guy says, "Well, yeah, they're gonna get, shoot Kennedy." He said, "What?" He said, "Well, we are gonna need to know what we at." Well, he said, "Don't worry about it." He said, uh, they're going to get somebody right after to put the blame on. He said, well, how do you think they're going to do it? He said, from my office building with a high-powered rifle. Mm. I heard Judge Joe Brown speak about that. That's right. Oh, wow. Judge Joe Brown, Judge Joe Brown was taken off the case. 
Uh, he was uh, on the, uh, he on the was, case of Dr. Was, King he assassination? Was, he opened the case up to have that gun tested. And see, the gun that shot Dr. King, that bullet that they took out to Dr. King has, ne has never been traced back to that gun. They didn't run ballistics. The ballistics test that never did match. Oh, okay. and, they, and Judge Brown tested it. See, that's what a lot of people don't know. Brown had it, had it tested, and it didn't go back to that gun. Oh. Next thing you know, Judge Joe Brown on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Which oh. was good for Judge Joe Brown. They didn't kill him. Right. Right. Because the judge who was looking at James Earl Ray's appeal, Ray pleaded an Alfred plea on Dr. King. You know what that means? No. It's a it's a legal term. Meaning that I'm going to plead guilty to this, but I really didn't do it. But I'm pleading guilty to it because it's in my best interest to do so. Right. I can't beat the case. If you if you go back and look at what happened to the West Memphis uh, three, they stayed in prison so long, and then they took an alpha plea. They sent it back to the regular court, and they said, did an alpha plea, and they let them go because they really didn't do it. Mm. And they had no evidence on them to do it. They really had no evidence on Ray that he shot Dr. King other than that stuff they found outside that door. All right. And, in, uh, in the bushes. No, it wasn't in the bushes. Ray was in the flop house. On the second floor, supposedly. All right. According to Ray, allegedly, Ray, allegedly <laughs> uh, Ray said that he never was there. It was a guy named Raul there, which, in truthfully, Ray lied. Ray told lies every time he had a chance to. So you have to listen to him. You had to piece all his interviews together and listen to him because he told some truth in there, too. Mm -hmm. Ray supposedly shoots Dr. King from the bathroom. Runs back to his room, wraps everything up in a blanket, runs outside, and sees the police right across the street. Takes and throws the bundle down in the doorway of a amusement company. Mm -hmm. They made jukeboxes and stuff. He drops it in that doorway, he jumps in his car, and takes off running. Bam, he gone. Problem with that is, the guy was sitting in there, he said somebody came about three minutes before all that happened to him. Dropped it out there. He said he thought it was somebody delivering something. So he didn't think nothing about it until the police came and said, hey, who put this out here? He said, well, somebody dropped it out there in a suit a few minutes ago. Now, when Ray is leaving Memphis, there is someone with a ham radio, a CB radio, that broadcasts a fake police chase on the other side of Memphis. His white Mustang being chased and he's firing the police. We need police officers and such and such and such as that. Ray then went to the south of Memphis and went through Mississippi and gone through Alabama uh, to get over to Georgia. Yeah, See, there's a lot of stuff about that people don't know. Everybody know yeah. the Kennedy stuff. Nobody know the King stuff. Nah. No. That's, and it, it, it really goes to show that deep state shit. Though. Ray went and drove to Birmingham, cleaned, threw all the stuff out of the car in Birmingham. And Birmingham is a whole different situation. Ray was in Canada, 1967. He had two suits tailored. Had one of them shipped to a rooming house in Birmingham. Somebody also went and got their driver's license renewed. It wasn't under the name Ray. It was under the name of Galt, Eric S. Galt. Eric S. Galt never lived in Birmingham. But they got a Birmingham, a, a Birmingham address and a renewed driver's license there mm. sent to this room and house. With a suit. Ray never did stay in Birmingham. The only thing Ray ever did in Birmingham, supposedly, was to buy this gun, these two guns, to shoot King with. Well, anyway, after the shooting, Ray goes to the, supposedly, goes to, allegedly, yeah. a, the projects. In Atlanta, leaves his car, catches a bus, and goes to Canada, stays in Canada a month and a half, and then goes to England. Wow. He's caught in England after he has gone to Brussels, Belgium, trying to get pass a passport to go to Africa. He was going to be a mercenary in Africa. Yeah, at least. This dude right here, man, didn't graduate third grade. And was one of the dumbest criminals of all time. Seriously, he was like Gilligan robbing, robbing stuff. He robbed the post office and ran into the back door of the police station. 
That's worse than I mean, world stuff. The <laughs> last the last episode, I don't, don't want to get off on this. And the last year of James Earl Rife, of James Earl Ray's life was so contrary to what everything he had ever done. It was like two different people doing it. Right. He was whining and dying in women. And he never had a girlfriend. Mm. Mm. But they, they, I mean, this one lady said she not he knocked her off her, her feet. She was thinking about marrying dude. Oh wow! In Canada, before he went to England, he bought tailored suits. He went into a suit store in Montreal and had a suit tailored. It's, yeah. it's incredible if you read and see none of this information is in the new books. You have to read the older books that was written. Yeah. All right. And when you read them, I have a friend of mine named Stu Wexler mm-hmm. who wrote two books on Dr. King, Assassination. And he brings some of this up. But you got to go read the older books that was written that actually goes into the detail of them going talking to these people who were with him. Nobody, FBI, the RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which is Canada's FBI. Mm-hmm. Nobody went to interview the people at the rooming house for hmm. tw- for almost twenty years. Oh, it was dude. it was in the late eighties when somebody it was an author, now, Dr. Philip Melanson. He's passed away now. Dr. Melanson went up there and interviewed, and, and the guy said, "We've been waiting on somebody to come talk to us for years. And are you the first one?" Wow. So, real quick, let's jump back. I want to uh, bring it back a little bit <laughs> okay. to what we were talking about, uh, the schools and COVID. What do you suggest for parents to do as a school teacher? What is your suggestion and advice for them? I don't have any advice except for send your kids to school. And this is the reason why. I don't, I think at some point in time, we're going to go remote again. Okay. So it's a, it's a period of time in there. We're going to try to do everything we can to make it safe for them. Right. I don't really look at a, at a safety issue for the kid. I'm looking one for me. Right. So I'm going to be taking my orange juice, taking my vitamin D, taking my elderberry, mm-hmm. you know, my sea moss. Come on now. Yeah. Okay, that black mm-hmm. seed oil. Come on. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to be in a routine, mm-hmm. but they're going to have to make sure their kids are taken care of. One of the things that our, our parents are, I don't want to blame parents because people are working, man. We we all live in this thing called life. Right. Yes. Okay? I, I don't want to put no blame because parents are, we get, they got so much on them because I know I got so much on me that I can understand that they might not be able to, to catch a sneeze. Right. But that's something they're going to have to be looking for. Right. If they do it. If they don't do it, we got options. That's if, if they send their kids back to school physically. Physically. Then you got to be on top of you gonna have to be, yeah, to. They're going to have to pay attention to a lot of things. But they've got the remote option. Mm-hmm. They've got the virtual school. I've got relatives of mine that's, hey, my kid is going to do remote. I'm not going to argue with you on that. Right. right. So, attendance wise, mm-hmm. are they going to have to change attendance policies? They, or? they are doing some attendance things. Just like if you do remote, you're going to have to check in at 745. Right. Okay. 815, you're going to have to check in. And, and it's going to be a teacher. They're going to be doing remote. I don't know if we're going to do Teams, Zoom. How it's gonna be done? So, yeah, cause I was I was wondering that it, with the remote option, are you somebody in your class? Mm-hmm. If I was a student mm-hmm. and I'm doing remote, would I be seeing you teaching the kids that did show up, and it would just be a video camera? Like you know what? Cam? I don't know yet if they're gonna do that, but I would imagine you right. might be able to say, "Hey, Mr. Brown, can you hit me up?" Right. Right. And then I'll do something with a Zoom and right. get you on. And we communicate, say, hey, this is what you need to do right here. Right. This okay. is what you need to watch. Go to YouTube and watch this video right here. Okay, okay. I taught on TV for seven years. I did ITV from 1995 until 2003. Right. My okay. first day teaching, I went on TV. 
Oh, okay. So, all right. Okay. So, so I know how to do it. So, right. do, but with that experience, um, the school board or whoever's in mm-hmm. charge, are they utilizing your experience to to try and? No, they and got they facil- they've gone just like we used to have to have. You see what we're doing here? Right. Yes. We're on Facebook. Right. We're on. I don't know if you're on YouTube or not. But yeah, we've got you got the capa- capacity to go to YouTube. Right. right. We used to have to have a room set up. The camera was having to go through the cable company. It was on channel 50, uh, channel 98. It, okay. We don't have to. We cut out a whole lot of stuff right here with the right. technology that we have. Yeah. Right. So we don't have to do as much as we used to. So, yeah, it, it, they don't. it's people smarter than I am, and I don't know the technology. Right. So right. all we got to do is get together. Right. right. I imagine you guys are probably use a lot of zoom yeah i know microsoft teams was something they were coming up with last year before school was even teams out. is all right i've used teams before yeah it's i like right. zoom better yeah yeah zoom you just dropped the link you right no software needed and mm-hmm. you know we have a question they said okay. uh, how are they going to handle special needs kids that is a question that i cannot answer fully okay. but i would tell her that they are coming up with a plan Okay. Uh, she needs to uh, contact downtown and work with that and see what the, what they're going to do. Uh, it's a lot of questions. Like, like I said, I can't even answer everything because I don't know. Right. right. I right. mean, it's we, we are going to find out more tomorrow. Okay. And Tuesday and Wednesday when we go in okay. about what we need to do. And hopefully we can get that information to the people. Yeah. yeah. The, that's where the that's where the ball the ball is dropped because we think we make the call outs and we do some of the things which are good. Right. Everybody still is not being communicated to. Right. right. Correct. Exactly. And that's the thing that uh leads like you know, we have viewers here, but for those parents that don't know that all right you need to stay on top of your kids you can't let a sneeze go that's like mm-hmm. the thing right. we need to make sure that we have that way of transparency of communication right. you know what i mean they, they just need an app mm-hmm. mary mary county school app and they, all and the I don't information understand why they don't because uh in smyrna you know adonis goes to school in smyrna okay and they got the class dojo app mm-hmm. so well I no can, they use class dojo well then but, start but, ripping but, it well up. here's the thing though class dojo is operated teacher to teacher if you have a Murray County school board, like a direct app, mm-hmm. the push notifications come from the head, not from the fingers, not mm-hmm. from the toes. So, you know, teacher to teacher, the information might not even be there from teacher to teacher. But if it's a direct coming from Murray County school board, direct message, mm-hmm. we're going to start on this day. Oh, nope, the kids are going remote this day and mm-hmm. it hits there. That's more of a direct. You're not. Depending, because the class dojo app is cool yeah. if your teacher is on their shit. If your teacher ain't on their shit, well, shout out to let, the, let the me, honest teachers. Let they, me, they definitely be hitting me up. <laughs> let me, and if they doing it, I mean that's that's technology and stuff that you know the teachers need to be celebrated on. But also, you know, one of the things that that people need to make sure they and the elementary kids' parents are better than high school kids. Is yes, mm-hmm. okay. Because mm-hmm. people get in high school, they thinking, you know, my, you damn grown, man. make <laughs> sure that the attendance offices know their phone number, their information, their, their emails, right. all of that. They need to make sure they know it because if they don't, when it's time for us to start calling, then that information gets missed. Right. They do... Central High School does a call out every Monday night. Okay. Okay? So, it's things that they're going to have to be aware of right. to get that information to you. Yes. Um, I know one of the things that I had when I was when I was working as an AP, having a call, a kid got hurt, and we was trying to locate a parent, mm-hmm. and it was five phone numbers that was bad. Ooh. Okay. So those things, if you if you change phones, call the school and say, hey, I need to give you, you guys my new phone. Yeah. yeah, yes. And we'll get that information to the person who it needs to go to, the attendance office. Right. And if we don't have it, see, we can't do that if we don't have in high school. See, elementary school is a whole lot different. Right. Well, at least in, in high school, uh, at the very least, the parents, because let's be honest, kids got, all the kids in high school got phones. Right. So it needs to be a... 
an effort where they're telling their their kids if you if they go back to the physical, you know what I mean, the physical school, that they need to utilize the things that that they're hearing from the teachers or the mm-hmm. principal, the announcements, those daily announcements, that type of stuff. Because mm-hmm. in Central, you can pull your phone out now, right? You could, but see now every yeah. kid at Central is getting ready to have a computer. Oh, oh well, see, right. th- there you go. That, right. Yeah, we going one to one. Say it one more time. We going one to one. No, no, before that, every kid, every is, student in Central High School is supposed to get a computer this year. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, actively communicating with your parents also, or or getting a, because if you in high school, and we only speaking in high school right mm-hmm. now. Then if you know your parents just got a new number. Then you should be also, you know what I'm saying, making right. sure that 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 information, information stays up, up to date. Right. Exactly. I mean, maybe they need to simplify it. Maybe there's a simpler way to do it. Maybe it's I just was, a form online. They yeah. go, you log in, update your information, yeah. change it instead of and, having to come down there. Because no, no, parents, they work they second. Working. They, they work working. first. You know, mm-hmm. you know I'm real sympathetic about that and because I'm coming from working class parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and people working, they don't have time, you know, some kids have mama that can come out there. I didn't. Have, my mama was working. My mama was working. Yeah. My mama worked next to the school, but she wasn't popping up unless she needed to whip my ass up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah. was busy. <laughs> but, Shout just, out to Brandon's mama for whooping his ass. Yeah, Jennifer, <laughs> she put up every student uh, five to twelve, fifth grade to twelfth grade gets a is one to one. Nice. Okay. All okay. right. All right. And that's something that I didn't. know. Chromebook, about. a laptop. Uh, I believe is what they're supposed to be giving for. Is it a okay. is it a Chromebook or a laptop? It's e- it's either or. Some schools okay. are gonna get cl- Chromebooks and some are gonna get laptops. I'm gonna go ahead okay. and tell you guys. Listen to me right now. If you can get a laptop, get the laptop. Do not get the Chromebook. There is so many things that are inaccessible to the Chromebook. I'm not knocking the Chromebook. It's mm-hmm. okay for certain things. They don't pay us, bro. Just speak your truth. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. But if you can get that <laughs> laptop. Until y'all start sponsoring, we yeah, get the, get the laptop. Yeah, now right, the problem, the, Chromebook. the problem is going to be, you know, accessing, you know, Wi-Fi and the quality of it and so forth. And right. So, on. so yeah. you want to talk about that idea we had or no? I I think we should. So we, we had a business yes. idea Great. of uh, setting up, maybe getting a couple of American Legions or whoever, some of these venues that maybe are. You know, Indeed. dormant through the week, mm-hmm. you know, and setting up stations where parents could drop their kids off if they didn't have access to the Wi-Fi, if they didn't have access to that. And the kids come there and they can do their lesson on mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. you know, maybe pay X amount of dollars to make sure they get fed and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Unless you got a restaurant that's willing to uh, support, you know, support right. like, and like feed you kids. Like be able to chip in. We have that, br- that, that help my brother uh, mentality. Right. But uh, having, um, not to cut you off, bro, no, but God. having a, a, a place to where you have maybe one on-site tutor, you know what mm-hmm, I mean, yeah. that type of thing. But they're still learning through through mm-hmm. the computer. Right. But it's a place to where uh, parents can, you know, drop them off. Because uh, be honest, like like you said when we was talking about it, some parents have to work. Some just want their kids out the house. Right. right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Be honest, right. you know what I mean? And if they, if we had these stations set up to where they can connect to Wi-Fi, still learn, have somebody there mm-hmm. to be able to tutor. It's getting sanitized, that, sprayed mm-hmm. down, exactly. wiped down. Very simple, very bare. I mean, does that sound like something that would be? You know, it depends. That sounds good to me. It's, right. like, it's okay. just going to have okay. to make those okay. things work, you know. And, and see, the deal with working with schools and working with kids is you have to be vetted. And uh, they're going to make sure that you don't have any type of negative background right. about that. But, you know, if you clean on that, I'm. Or it's even gonna, if we take it down a little bit and let's say, all right, on this block, mm-hmm. if Paco got the best Wi Fi, right? Mm-hmm. And he knows the kids on the street, so the kids next door can come over with his kids, mm-hmm. and that type of thing. Even if they set up like that, one person on East 8th right. has six seven people that you know they're going to be at the house they work from home anyways the type of thing or something and they're able to have a group of kids there right and and to that can connect and they can get snacks or whatever right so it doesn't even have to be a a large thing where we got to get a whole building with 40 kids but just that small group that simple idea if people were to start utilizing that then that's a way to uh, make sure that they, that everybody gets caught up that everybody has a chance to connect right. and to learn you know what I mean and then you know even if in the case of something happening kid gets sick then you've got five kids that maybe got sick rather than 
two hundred children mm-hmm. in the school. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because mm-hmm. they, they were coughing in the cafeteria. And see, this is something that goes back to what I said at the beginning of this. I'm going back to May. Okay. April. We are going to have to learn how to have community again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you're saying, everybody on this block, I don't know if y'all know each other, but folk need to be finding out who's on their street. Yes. And yes. what what plan can we come up if the store closed? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. real, real things. I found a uh, picture, and I put it on Facebook a couple of years ago, and the picture was in the late 70s, we had a, a huge snowstorm hit Columbia. It paralyzed the city, literally. That's before we got all the sophisticated stuff we have now that GM's here. Mm. And it was a picture of the ladies who lived on our in our neighborhood walking to the store. And they would walk to the store every day to get stuff for older people in the neighborhood and bring mm-hmm. it back to them. They couldn't mm-hmm. get out. And those type of things, it goes back to what you were saying about the Wi-Fi. Uh, we need to have that stuff if whoever's on the street got that accessibility, whoever can make up a hot spot with their phone. Right, yes, yes. It, and those those little technological advances right. that we have can be utilized in big ways right now. Right. And, and, and keep everybody connected. Yes, yes. And that's what we need more of. And see, if we're thinking like that, we ain't thinking about killing each other, fighting each other. Right. The stuff that... We all in the same boat. Yeah. It don't make no difference what color you is. You in the same boat. You I'm getting I'm boat. getting back to the hood now. It don't make no difference what color you is. R. <laughs> okay? It doesn't make any difference. We in the same boat. We mm-hmm. got to learn how to love each other. And have love each other. Because the only way we're going to survive. Dig it. It's the only way. It's the only Dig way. It. Without, and, uh whether you want to go conspiracy theory, whether you want to go uh, uh, classism, whether you want to go by whatever, right. you have to realize we are in the same boat. The 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 are the key to us being able to maintain the society that we have mm-hmm. is based on our unity. It's mm-hmm. based on our pulling together. Mm-hmm. And any plan you want to go through, whether you think that this is all leading towards communism or depopulation or whatever, the key to fighting against whatever you think the agenda is, is unity. Mm-hmm. Like, it, that's the same answer is the answer for, for all of them across the board. You know what I mean? Hey, I'm, I'm digging at everything you're saying because I, I've got some... You know, unpopular belief of yeah. things that's going on, and I'm recognizing what's happening. However, the that, the same. that's still over here. I've got to deal with this right here. Right. What can I do to, you know, in the meantime? To affect the, the change that I can't control. My grandmother lived through the Great Depression. She was telling stories, told me a story about College Hill. Woman over there didn't have nothing to eat. Three kids now. Mm-hmm. My grandmother. And her mother fixed food for everybody and then split it so they could eat. Okay? Yes. You know, th- you know, part. this is this is how we gonna His mic. this is how we gonna take care of. And if we don't do that, then I'm hating you. You mm. had something you didn't share with me. And that's human being stuff. That's human nature. Yes. But then when you eat together, you breaking bread, you start breaking some of that stuff down. And it's different. Okay? I'm trying to survive. Some people going into drugs. Some people getting drunk. It was mm-hmm. This stuff was going on during this shutdown. They know yeah. this. This is why people's mental health was breaking down. Yes. Because all they had to do, all, all they had to lean on. Was that? Was the thing that they usually have to wait till the weekend for. Right. Right. And now you, you getting it every Dude, day. I was reading. I went back into what soothed me, listening to music. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Okay? Yeah. So you've got to fall back into your, you know. Your comfort. Your comfort, something that's making you feel good about you. And then you get to learn some more stuff about yourself, too. 
I realized that my son lo- loves Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, yeah, wow. that's cool. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? cool. Yeah, that's all we doing. Like, I'm, you know, what we doing today? Where we going? We some, ain't going nowhere. Some people, we to play some Michael pe- Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> some people were talking about they didn't like. You know, my husband's at home. My wife is in the other room, and she get mad at me because I might come through the house, mm-hmm. stomping, uh, say some words that shouldn't be saying because she's on the phone. Right. But that time, I had a chance to get to know who my kids were and get to know my wife. Yeah. And that's that, I, and I hope that people knew that's the time you were supposed to be like. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Like right? with that, with I, that I also got to get spiritual. Yes. Okay. You were able to get in that word a let little me, bit more. Let me read something here. Yeah. All right. It, it, it showed telling you what's going on. If you don't have, I'm going to say this right here. If you don't have a spiritual base, you lost. You in trouble. You in real trouble. Because if you can't, if you. You got to know this is a bigger thing than, than just us. Right. 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 Okay. All right. Now, with that being said, one of the things that I did want to speak about was uh, the fact that the government came out and admitted that they found UFO vehicles that were not made on Earth. Mm-hmm. And that was a recent thing, and they're going to be um, uh, declassifying uh, uh, documents that pertain to UFO activity. Now, do you think... But let me say what I think first real quick. I feel like what we think are aliens or whatever, and we think that there's all these different dimensions and all that. There's only two dimensions, in my opinion. There's the spiritual, and then there's the physical realm. So if you're dealing with an alien that has vehicles or something like that, then they either are already in this dimension, which means that they are close to us, like close, like already here, or they're in the spiritual realm. And if y'all already got evidence of them, then that means that you have something spiritual about to come over. And we can go into CERN and all that type of stuff, but that's something people, I want people to look up. But that's just my belief that what they are now about to declassify is evidence of the spiritual to or, me. Okay. Or, oh, okay. What if our whole spiritual basis has been written by extraterrestrial things well you're going into the Anunnaki book yes well the thing is and a lot of people uh, don't <laughs> great time the Anunnaki belief is written about in the Bible right I understand and then you we back at the spiritual because they came from the spiritual realm and then were cast down. The Anunnaki's is uh, the people believe that the aliens came down, gave the information. Right. And I agree with that. Because right. in the books that they took out the Bible, the book of Enoch, mm-hmm. sp- specifically states the names of, of the angels that fell and what they brought. Mm-hmm. The knowledge that they gave. Mm-hmm. So that backs up the Anunnaki story. Right. It just clarifies it gets more specific in detail with how many came. Right. What exactly they they shared and what was the result of that? Right. Mm-hmm. So that is all we, we on the right, same right. thing. So we still back at the fact that it was a spiritual realm that came into the physical realm. Right. And now I'm, I, I feel like they're they're showing the the evidence and proof that they've gathered over years. Right. That only goes to state you need a spiritual base right. because there's something beyond us. Right. And regardless of, of of if you think that it's ET or if you think that they came from Mars or whatever, right. this is a, a outside being that has that exists within our realm. Yes, yeah. like and, and that that you really need to take that seriously. Right. So what what do you think about uh, UFOs and all that? Because I was I took the class. I remember my man. Well, <laughs> it's you know it, it's too much that has happened. For it to be dismissed. Mm-hmm. You can't just like. So, um, when you are in uh, Mothman mm-hmm. things, they still ain't explained it. They just know it was UFO activity going on alongside time to think what's going on. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know there was a Mothman sighting up at uh, on Thompson Station. I did not know. In that. the last 20 years. Okay? Um, no, you told us that. Yeah, I told y'all yeah, that when y'all yeah, was in wait school. A uh, yeah. When 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 you get when you see something that scares you enough that you go to the police, there's something there. Okay, law enforcement, they don't talk about it. They see stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
Um, I believe in beings from somewhere else. I do not believe in the um, so-called theories that we have now. I know what the pilots have seen. I know what the mm -hmm. space program has seen. I know mm -hmm. what they've de they dealt with. Okay, right. Where they come from, I don't know. I will say this. Uh, working with Mike Sears over the last uh, seven, eight years um, and at Central and in that whole paranormal situation, mm -hmm. uh, we've seen some things. The last things that we saw uh, that we dealt with Mm -hmm. In November of last year, uh, there are several things that, that I've seen and that things that have occurred that brings question to some things. So, in, in other words, uh, you have elementals. Yeah. Uh, which I don't, I'm, I'm really trying, I hope that stuff ain't around. Uh but we had, to give you the background of what happened, we did an investigation in November, the Friday before Thanksgiving. Okay. That Wednesday, we had a power. This I mean, last one, 2019? In 2019. Okay. We had a water main to, to break in front of the school. Water was shooting up in front of the school like, like we struck oil out there. Mm -hmm. Well, that Friday night, we did a paranormal investigation. And it was another teacher with us, and we went to my room and her room, mm -hmm. in which the water was turning on by itself. <coughs> wow. And one of the, we had a medium. This medium saw, came across something. She was like, what are you? She was like, what are you? And I oh. asked her later, I said, what did you come across? She said, I've never experienced that before. I said, what was it? She said it was a water spirit. Elemental. Well, they cause mischief with water. Mm. And and this was just last year? Central's pipes burst over Christmas the first year we was in that building. Oh. So I was like, do I believe in it? Mm. It's, it's enough reason to... Yeah, I, I guess to not it's something, it. well, I'm not going to doubt the stuff. But it's going back to UFOs and things of nature. So why do y'all think that they're declassifying these right now? Then, like, why? Why the, the Europeans did it? Uh, the French did it about ten years ago. The French declassified a lot of stuff. CIA declassified a lot of stuff too. Mm. A, lot, a lot of people don't know that the but, CIA but why declassify. De like, why, they why de make it public? They, to us? they just put it. It's just like a JFK stuff. The JFK stuff. Sometimes they will throw some stuff out there to see if you're paying attention to it, and, uh, they, and it's like, oh, they just declassified something. Uh, if you don't know anything about JFK assassination, they got folks literally that wait for them to drop stuff. Or they go to the archives and pull up files. Yeah. And they'll find files that was blacked out 10 years ago. Wow. Then they're not blacked out now. They said that there was mentions of the JFK uh, assassination and, and Hillary Clinton's emails and stuff. JFK like, assassination wow. is affected. It's, it's still, it's a reason why this stuff is still classified. I said, yeah, definitely. Like it's, that, that yeah, goes it's, all the way it's still dealing with some stuff. But uh, so with the um, with the UFOs and with the sightings and everything like that, I, with this being an election year, is this like how you said you throw out so much information mm -hmm. and you overflow everything? Do you? That's what I. That's my my thought process is. They just like gonna. Con Continuously just keep throwing out. Yes, all this, this stuff, stuff was tested. Mm -hmm. It was a social experiment during the Obama administration of how much information we would take without researching and how much we would believe. We passed that test with flying colors. So, guess what? That's the society we live in now. That's the method. That's mm. how we're doing it. Misinformation, disinformation. Yes. Mm. Sending out so much that everybody's like, oh, like, think about COVID. I've heard. Type type blood, uh, typo blood types really don't get it. I've heard weed 
will help block the block the you know i heard sunlight would kill it but florida is the most rampant state so the yeah. sunshine state obviously that's debunked you know yeah. what i mean kids couldn't get it guess it, what it would kids are getting 80 it. degrees yeah it's right good. like we've heard so much crap mm -hmm. that that's just what it is now you're just gonna have to find a source that has credible information and ride it till it's dry mm -hmm. you know that's wild that this is the world we in. That's the method that works. Well, look at what we're doing. We're sending our information to somebody from, from the living room. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you don't get one source. So somebody can look at me and say, oh, he's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. Right. But everything I said, you can go find it. You can go research. Right. And come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do your own thing. You can do it. So everybody's now is, is an expert and they can also be discreet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That wow. He's an expert, but he don't know shit. Like that's, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Right. I'm not listening. Look, I'm not listening to that doctor. I'm listening to Candace Owens or whatever right. her yeah. name is on Yo. Facebook. Yeah. It's, there's you so know. many options now. Right. But one thing I do know for sure, Portland has federal troops on it. Right. And we need to be paying attention to that. That's true. I don't I don't want to talk about it because well, there's okay, so much yeah. going on. We got to rap. We got to rap. But that's one thing that <laughs> is in the news that I do want people to pay attention to. Right. Because that's going to let you know how things, like, their tactic strategy. So These I, are all tests. People. Yes. When you see this stuff, yes. they're testing out. Man, right now, they're doing the most with testing. That's why each state is getting, that's the, that's the fastest way for them to test out all these different methods to see mm -hmm. what works is to assign it state by state county by county mm -hmm. and we're just going to throw these tests out and we're going to collect this data back mm -hmm. and whatever works whatever the most profitable whatever is the most you know gets the results that they want not yeah. that we need that, that right want. that's what we're going to get right wow. so and, yeah. it, and another thing is you don't know who's doing it Right. Yeah, uh, it's it's always the government, but you also corporations are yeah, doing some I, stuff. I told Brandon this, the exact thing you're saying. I said everyone points the finger at the government. They say it's always the government, but most of the time it's an agenda of a corporation mm -hmm. or a business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They may be affiliated to the government. They may mm -hmm. use the government to twist the narrative how they please, but most of the time it's the organization, not the government. So they had that been done a think tank or some shit. Well, the lobbyists, like you said, they lobby this stuff. The the government, that's the gatekeepers. All right. I need to do, I need to hang here. Here's this check. Go ahead and sign this bill. Right. And guess what? The price of masks are up and toilet paper is gone. Right. You know what I mean? Like just whatever it may be. And instead of you getting a snow day, you getting a doggone uh COVID. remote learning day. Right. Man. To where you in, you're not gonna be in hell school off ever. Right, right, right. <laughs> Everything's, and it'll probably be, see, back in the day, they started this eye tracking software with the phones, mm -hmm. and it tracks your eyes, and like, if you look, if you close your eyes, and I told somebody, I said, that's probably some software that's getting ready to be Im implicated into schools mm -hmm. and stuff, and we're probably going to be doing everything remote in 10 years. You know, that's probably five or six years ago I said this. Why, why do you need eye tracking software? Like, why would you need that for a cell phone? Right. Like, just say, oh, I closed my eyes, so your video stopped playing. No, I'm going to just turn the video off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, why right. would you spend millions of dollars on this software? Right. You know, this is stuff that they, they test stuff to see what's going to stick. Yeah. So. Like, somebody uh, reminded me how Snapchat started, had the mask for, like, two years ago. Yes. The Snapchat face filters had, to, had the, the mask. The mask with the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. You want to go... Even weirder, what? I think these masks just really helping all these people with meth mouth. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right, yeah, yeah we got to wrap, bro. We got to wrap. Right. We we'll bring Mister Mister Brown on for another. Man, this we'll just do full very, conspiracies, bro. This has been a very insightful. Hey, talk. I got uh, the top ten, and I, I can break it down, and okay. it's it's real stuff. It's not okay. uh, we definitely do that. You know, the Illuminati. Well, uh -huh. August is going to be our money month. So uh, we go yes. through. We bring in financial advisors, people that uh, you know do taxes, that uh, do investments and, and strategies, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But once we get through the money month of trying to help everybody get financially stable out here, then I, I want to get into the conspiracy theories. We can actually do it on another day that's not a Sunday. Okay. And <laughs> like for real. Yeah. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Who That Podcast. Um, 
all the stuff that we talked about, go back and research. Uh, go back and watch the video again because I'm sure you missed something. Yep. Remember the, the books that he mentioned, the uh, the people that he mentioned. We'll put them in the comments. Yeah, all of that good stuff. Um, share this, please, so other parents can get information on, on what's coming up and what they need to do. Right. right? That's that's the biggest thing that, I, that y'all need to take from this. They need to go to the Murray County Schools website. Yeah. Stop sure, listening to your friends right. on Facebook. Make sure you go to the Murray County Schools website and they got all that information laid out for you. The mm-hmm. Murray County Schools website needs to be something that is the same way y'all forward me all that stuff in my DMs and my messages. In my messages. <laughs> y'all need to be forwarding screenshots from Murray County School website yes. with real information that's going on locally. We'll post that in the comments also. Yes. But until next week, uh, we hope everybody stays safe. We hope everybody uh, gets through happily. Uh, in the meantime, stay blessed. Don't stress. Life is just a test. Who that? Who that? Man, that was pretty.